Hey folks, welcome back. I'm going to bring you along on this uh, repair here. This is kind of a spin-off from the uh, video we did um, that uh, where we reinstalled this. Uh, well, we have one other video already out where we were uh, removing the uh, cylinder head and then uh, talking about where our leak and how we fixed a uh, leak because we had coolant leaking into the uh, oil. Uh, this video is strictly just about... Um, no, no oil pressure because I fired this thing up a couple of days ago and everything was running and it realized that it didn't have uh, any oil pressure and so uh, there's a screen underneath here um, and then this gear and then there's another gear around here somewhere that um, oh yeah it's right there um, we got to clean all that stuff up and and that's all part of the uh, oil pump and so uh, you pull that deal down, and I will show you how all this, you know, I didn't have time the other day, you know, I thought maybe hopefully we weren't, you know, like screwed that we screwed up the engine or anything like that when I had this thing running because I had it running for a couple of minutes and then uh, should have checked the oil pressure right off the bat, but I've had this thing running lots of times in the past and never had an issue. So anyhow, um, I don't know exactly what caused uh, this that we're going to get into, but uh, I'm going to show you what happened and um, go from there. But I mean, basically, you know, we're we're still in good shape. We got no spark plugs in here, but we're still in good shape. There's no um, metal shavings or anything like that that came out of the oil, so uh, that's all good. And then everything, valve train, all that stuff, still working uh, like it's supposed to. Um, anyways, uh, let me show you the screen and everything. That's what I originally thought our issue was. Okay, so I got this thing soaking in here. But you can see that's the screen. I mean, there's a lot of old sludge on here. This needed to come out anyhow. Um, basically that big long, and I will show you all this when it all, when we go all back together and everything. Um, how all this goes and what it does, but... You know, you can see that that, and then this is the uh, where those two gears go to do your oil pump. And so this sits up in there just like this. And, uh, you know, this screens out the big, big chunks of stuff before. And then this uh, line right here that, that with the fitting on there goes right up into your uh, oil filter housing. And um, that supplies it with oil running through the filter and then it has lines coming away from that to go to different parts of the engine to uh, supply that so that's pretty much how this uh, works um you know and i was like well yeah it's a lot of sludge but it's you know was working before and everything like that let me uh show you what i found so anyways mind you i'm not an expert on uh these tractors this is the only one i've ever worked on but i've done quite a bit of stuff uh to it namely had a cylinder head off numerous times um put a new ignition deal on the other side and you know i wish i'd have filmed a lot of that stuff it was a year, few years back before i was doing a lot of youtube videos and whatnot um i've also had you know a radiator i mean i've had this whole whole thing apart before and everything like that um I don't know how long it's been since this tractor had ran before I before I got it, but it was a long time. Um, but anyhow, uh, when I pulled this thing out and um, was looking at it, you can see how it's a square drive right there. And then um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna pause this a second, and then I'm gonna get up and where we can look up inside there. Okay, right up in there is your actual, uh, you know, area where everything's dispersed at, you know. Um, but that's that thing right there in the center of those two bolts. That is another square drive deal. Well, when I looked at it a lot closer, you know, it was the same type of square drive as this. I was like, well, how the heck do those uh, mate up together and then... I started searching around, feeling around in, in here, and then that's when I found this thing. 
Now, this has uh, got a big crack in it, and it was actually, this crack was opened up quite a while. So I don't know what happened, but obviously this thing cracked to where it couldn't turn that thing. I doubt it fell off. Maybe it fell off when I pulled the, pulled the whole pump assembly out of here. I don't know. Um, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with this. Um, I don't know if we can try to find a new one of these somehow. Um, it's really just got to be a square drive that, you know, goes on here, you know, just like that. And then the other square drive goes right inside of there. And, you know, I don't know if something hard to believe something got big enough to get in because, you know, that screen's got really small mesh in there. It's hard to believe that something big got in here. I don't know um, what happened on that, but that's that's essentially what did happen in this thing. Uh, you know, couldn't turn these gears anymore to pump any oil up through the filter and through the rest of the engine and all that. So anyway, um, we've got to uh, figure out what we're going to do to uh, either fix this or we might we might weld it. I don't know. I'm not really going to trust that or for sure or not. I'm not I'm not 100% sure that's going to be the best. It ain't going to be the best way. Best way to be to find a new one. But, you know, this thing, uh, I don't know if this thing being here, this thing here is a 1938. Um, I'm sure the later ones probably got the same exact deal, but we're going to see if I can find this and um, get us a new one coming and whatnot and then i'll go through and show how to put all this back together um really it's simple um there's four bolts that drop off the cover and i'll show you you'll see that here a little bit later on and then that will you know that will allow you to be able to get like this gear out of there this one uh this one did not fall out first and then there's three bolts that mount the whole that whole screen assembly and once you drop that out then that's when this gear uh came along with it um minus this this was just laying up inside there so um anyway that's what we got to uh work on try to fix and and see if i can find this if i can find this i'll let you know where i found it at um yeah, but anyways, we'll uh, get all this stuff uh, cleaned up, all these two these two gears and that screen and everything like that. Um, we're gonna also gonna. I did manage to uh, uh, let's see if I can see that. There's your fitting right there. There's a line um, there, and I did uh, just put a little tiny bit of like just a short burst of uh, air pressure up through there. And notice that the gauge over here was turning, you know, or turning, but moving. And so gauge is apparently working good. And I mean, before uh, this thing was running, um, it seemed like the oil was almost, almost up to the M. You know, it sits like it does obviously at rest, but it was moving up towards, it wasn't quite to the M. But um, now, hopefully, with get it all clean and you know, work will probably have more better oil pressure and all that kind of stuff. So this is a couple of different video. You know, this can show you different. You know, if you got a low oil pressure problem or a no oil pressure problem like we did, uh, this can obviously help you out. And and we'll go through about how to put all this uh, stuff back together. So we'll keep going. Alrighty, folks, we got all of our uh, parts all cleaned up here. Um, so this is the uh, screen that we were talking about before. Remember how in the first shot, you know, this was completely just caked up. Um, there was even a bunch of oil caked up in, inside of here, you know, because it's just, just old oil from just sitting around. This needed to have been done. I should have done this a uh, long time ago. Um, so anyways, uh, the way that they uh, had this this deal on here, you know, it just went around here like this, and they just had, you know, it just had a piece of wire around it all twisted on there. So that's going to be the same way we're going to put it on there. Wire kind of fits kind of in this groove right here. i got to get a little bit better cleaning of that. Um, but the way this works is you're, 
your uh, this gear right here goes in to this part right here. Apparently, I can't do this with. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, and then um, this is just a. There's nothing with this deal, but. Um, Try to figure out how this remember how this goes. Okay, so that's gonna go on there like like that. And I'm gonna need both hands to get this uh screen started on here. Um and then uh you know, so obviously that you've got your oil comes in. Let's let's get this screen off of here now so we can talk about this. So you got the you know, obviously with the screen on you know this is all submerged in oil and the screen is just there to keep the big chunks of whatever could be in there uh out of the gears and whatnot so this is right here is where your inlet to the pump goes <clears throat> goes in through in through the pump here and then the outlet comes out of this threaded part here which has this fitting that'll thread into it and then i'm just gonna throw it this and then um you get your other end up there. I'll try to do my best to show you that stuff. I don't know if I got that in the shot before when we were looking at this or not. Um, and then obviously uh, you've got your other gear that's gonna go in here. And these are pretty tight tolerances. So you're gonna have to get it exactly right, which I can't really do with Anyways, it was like that, just there, just like so. Then we've got this uh, cover right here. We've got the gasket for it. You see where the, how it's made just perfectly for the gears. Um, definitely, we got this gasket right here. I don't know why they it's cut off like that. It's not like that in any part, but it should be fine. So basically, but when putting this together, we'll leave this gear just out because that's the last thing we're going to do because we're going to have to obviously when we go to insert this up inside of here uh we're gonna have to uh you know use this to kind of guide this in here before it'll drop in place like so and remember i did show this piece this was our original problem now i remember i told you this thing was opened up a lot more when i found it but this went on here and then it matches there's another that square drive right up there for the actual you know the part that's gear driven and that's what drives this pump so um we got us a new one here i got these uh all this stuff came from uh, steinertractor.com um seemed like they were pretty good they actually sent me a uh 2023 colander it's pretty cool but anyways this looks a little bit more beefed up you know than than this one was this was made pretty thin i don't know if this is original but i would assume maybe it is don't know what caused this um you can see it's kind of a fresh break and all that so i don't know if something big old chunk of really hard something or whatever got down in here uh i don't know i just seemed like these gears to be really robust to be able to chop up anything but i don't know i really don't know what heck happened engine vibration this thing could have been breaking you know quite a while or something i really don't know but it's what happened it's how we lost the oil pressure so this is half inch uh actually the funny thing is is a half inch socket will will fit right on this perfectly it's like a socket extension almost <laughs> um but anyways yeah and this is our cover for the bottom here so when we do get to put this in here we're gonna go ahead and mount this in here uh with its three bolts and everything like that we'll have this all on and and the fitting and everything because you're gonna have to kind of fit this up in there start the fitting get it tightened and then you'll have to push this up into place and then as you're doing that we'll have to line this gear up in there and stuff like that so um and then uh make sure it starts in place and then once we get it all kind of like bolted in and everything like that we'll hand crank the engine make sure that this gear is is turning and if it is we'll know that that's good and then we'll go ahead and just uh, stick this gear since it won't stay in we'll stick this gear in place uh, as we're putting this up in in there and then um yeah then we should be uh 
good to go there once we get these four bolts tightened up and then um you know so let's go have a look see kind of at the bottom of this steel uh right quick and uh show you a couple of other things okay underneath here and show you this is that fitting that hooks on the top right up there above that screen you can see where it goes uh into right here which is the top of where your oil filter is okay so then uh you've got another line uh, coming out over there to the left goes up uh right there to lubricate the end of the crankshaft there you know which has the end of that shaft there the rest of this i would assume all these gears and stuff kind of splash lubricate or maybe some of the oil from the top crankcase comes back down through there or whatever um and then uh you've got this line right here goes up and goes past the uh right there past the camshaft up that way you know remember this is where uh, that square drive is there for your our gear and the oil pump driven off the camshaft right there so um well uh i did put a little bit of air into uh, this deal right here test our gauge it seemed like it did okay so let's go up top okay there's the gauge right there it's uh working you know fine the needle moves all the way up to the very top and i just did a little couple little light bursts of air in there this uh top piece here it's got your gear for the uh shaft for the for the fan uh what else it does here is you know you've got your throttle connected you know right here so pushing this so pulling it back towards you decreases the throttle pushing it increases it but you notice how it's just connected kind of with this kind of a flimsy deal here which you know would allow this to kind of move a little bit now what's going on in here is and i'm not exactly sure how it kind of works but i know there's some centrifugal weights and everything like that um that when this thing you got this thing running at the rpm that you want and you you got a plow or whatever the heck behind you um if your plow run into something um really strong or maybe you start kind of going up a little bit of a slope or something like that what this is going to do is it's going to keep you know where you've got your throttle set right there you don't need to mess with it um as the speed decreases this will kind of move and increase your throttle so um what that's what what it's kind of a sort of a cruise control thing once you get that thing set um then you know it's it's just like cruise control you'd start up a hill a little bit and your cruise control will give your engine a little bit more fuel to maintain the same speed that's essentially what this is doing it's wanting to maintain the same rpm you're running at so if you have the power to pull up, up the little bit of a slope it's just going to maintain that that's pretty much how that and tractors have been like that for you know obviously since 1938 even uh, but they still have that technology or you know newer technology but same idea they still work it once you set the throttle where you want it to be uh if you got the power it's going to maintain that uh, rpm and all that stuff so um out here we've got uh, another port right here where you're going to have some uh, oil come out and then it's going to go into this deal right here now this is another thing we need to check and make sure it is all clean because this is how we get oil to the top of this uh valve train rocker assembly and all that stuff um up here is because you can see let me grab my flashlight okay so we got uh this there's a little hole right there these lights are pretty bright we have another one right there and another one right there and that's what's all going to lubricate these uh this whole valve train and everything so we want to get that cleaned up and everything before we do anything there um and we'll be ready to uh you know now there's gonna be some more cleaning up I got to do around here and if you're if your tractor has been sitting around a lot when you're trying to get this going or whatever um, 
you're probably going to have the same thing as I've got where on the bottom here you've got this goopy shit you know that won't come out of there so we have to get all that cleaned out of there and stuff like that like I said this should have been something I did prior you know I mean I drained what little oil came out of here um the very first time but I and I put a new a new filter in there but obviously now we're going to put another new filter on there these are pretty easy to change just un unscrew this deal and drop this uh bowl down and it's a it's a canister style filter so um anyways we're going to get more of this cleaned up here before we get everything put back together all right so we're going to get this thing put together now this don't doesn't fit through there so we're going to have to um Get this on first. And just make sure it starts all the way around and doesn't roll. If um, if it kind of wants to catch here, you can pick it up a little bit, with the screwdriver, and just kind of. Kind of get it worked into place. It's going to have that groove there from the old piece of wire. There we go. So now we got it, got it snapped into place. And then I'm kind of just going to, because uh, now the original groove that's you know that's in the screen, you're still in camera view. It's going to be like that. So. I mean, there's other things you could possibly do, a clothes clamp or some. I don't know, I'm just going to put it put it on here just as the same as it was uh, before. Whether that was right or not, I don't know. I'm going to go get me a little longer piece of wire. I didn't quite cut this one long enough. It's just a regular piece of mechanics wire. And I actually get a little bit ahead of ourselves because see how you don't want to have this cockeyed like that for you would really tighten that thing down so let's go ahead and get this we're going to put a little bit of uh just a little bit of pipe pipe dope on here not very much it's not like it's going to be really you just you know you don't really want it to leak but it ain't going to matter if it kind of did a little bit i guess i don't know put a little bit on here we just don't want to get too carried away with it so Put a light coating on here. Let's screw this down. There we go. And then I guess we'll just go ahead and stick this uh, shaft through here just because um, that way we keep all this kind of somewhat straight. I mean, this is going to move even with the, you know, because the screen's all just mesh. So, but I'll try, try and do the best job I can. Go right in here with the groove on here and we'll start it twisting here like so and then grab us a pair of pliers here and just turn this like that get a couple of turns going out so that I don't know if anybody can really see what I'm doing now that way we get it like this and then we'll give it a good all over like this and we'll just turn this a couple of times get this thing tightened so that, uh, it's like that and then we'll uh, trim off this excess here 
and I'm just kind of straightening that out and just pushing it up against there um because that's pretty that's you know that's exactly what they did with this deal whether this is original I don't know it could be but it would damn sure make sense for uh in 1938 that this would be you know how that would be done but got that like that um so that you know it's you can see that we've got the clearance past you know because this recessed area right here is going to go up inside there so you want this to kind of clear that um which it this looks like it should i might push it a little bit more you know but that's all in there and tight that's not going to come off anymore but like i said this will this will turn a little bit so basically what we're going to do uh, is we're going to have this thing uh this shaft off of here get up in there and get this started and then run this up through and this will be hanging about oh about i'm gonna try to see if i can find a stand for the camera and film it without you know but do the best i can but anyhow like i said these two last things will be the last so we're gonna get this thing uh this thing doesn't want to this might be kind of beat up right here this doesn't want to go uh all the way on which i'm fine with i can go ahead and tap it and, and get it down in there but what i do want to make sure of is i want to take just the gear with this thing now on here let's just go ahead and do that okay so that's tapped on there i mean i can't get it off with my you know and i'm fine with that that way i just hopefully it's not too tight of a fit uh getting it into the other one um or else we might just have to do a little tapping on the end of the gear here as we're going up with it. We'll see how that goes. But let's just stick this up inside of there and try to find that deal and make sure it's gonna that's gonna work. Yeah, I kind of got y'all on this angle right here. Uh, you're not really see much what I'm doing, but you'll get the idea. Bear with me. in here with this oh yeah it's real good I'm liking that so that way we can't really that yeah it's falling out of there and we're I'm rolling the starting wheel right now and it's wanting to turn the gear so that's good um, but I like the the way this fits tight on this piece right here that way we don't you know really have a way to you know because once this kind of goes up there's no way this is gonna but that you could bump this somehow and bump it in something and knock this piece off of here and not really know it as you're kind of sticking this up in there so now it won't come off which is good and but then it fits perfectly over that other shaft awesome that's what we want to i like that okay well, We'll keep on going. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this uh, oil filter goes in here. It's not too difficult. Oh, this is the uh, Napa. Number 12, 1242, I have no idea if that's even getting in the shot or not. 1242, um, comes with a couple of these different sizes of uh, gaskets. I just usually dunk this in the oil for one. It just kind of helps lubricate it when you put the little cover thing on there. But the other thing it does is it kind of helps, uh, so this is a flat style O-ring. And uh, helps the oil kind of helps get it to where it sticks in there. Okay, just like so. And then uh, there's the uh, oil filter, and it is the same on both ends. So it doesn't matter which way it goes. And it just goes up in place. And then this cover right here just rides on that O-ring. 
And then uh, this has got threads on the, the inside of it. And you just tighten this up. about as tight as you would any regular uh, spit-on oil filter. Uh, okay. And the next thing we've got is we got this whole piece here. So you might not be able to see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to uh, going to be starting in the uh, the fitting that. Uh, of how to use my hands because for one thing I'd like to hold it up with this <sighs> and you want to make sure you get your you know you get your gasket in place here. This is usually why I don't do live videos like this is because sometimes now it's like you just sit there and you fight with it and there's not really any tips or anything like that I can offer other than just get her done but i got her started now so it's a 7 8 uh fitting the other part of the fitting the bottom part like when we tightened it in this deal was um was three quarters of an inch so when we get it tightened up we'll take two wrenches and, and uh Tighten the two two together, you know. And we're going to kind of orient this thing the direction it needs to go which is uh, the part where the big long uh, shaft on that gear, you know, is towards the front. And, uh, this, you know, this fitting will kind of, kind of move a little bit as we, as we go. I got those tightened up. And, okay. Definitely don't want to forget your gasket because now you wouldn't be able to get it on. But this is pretty much, I mean, this is how it came out, so. a mother lover doesn't she I think I just broke the fitting yep I did well we'll figure out what we're gonna have to do about that so
Okay, this is what came out of there. So obviously we, what happened was is it broke like that. So I don't know if we can maybe rebraze this or if I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to figure out if I can get an actual whole new tubing and um, figure it out that way and double flare it, you know, because there is, you know, like this piece on here and this is wanting to come off of there even so, but that's possible that we can fix this, but I'd rather come up with a different way to um, fix this deal up with a new piece here. Um, you know, because this is, looks to me like this is a uh, half inch, maybe three eighths, seven sixteen, I don't know, but size of copper tubing. We'll see if we can get us a new piece and double flare to do something come up with a better way we might have to get new fittings on each end i just haven't figured that out yet but that's what uh what we got to do um like i said this goes up on the on the end that's uh you know where i pointed out to before right in the top of the oil filter base there so you know we got to get this thing fixed um you know but it has to be able to move a little bit it's gonna be able to flex some just didn't do it enough or it flexed here and it just broke this deal like that to where this should be, you know. But at any rate, we'll see if we can either repair this or get us a new one. Okay, so we would decided to go and um, I didn't want to fix these, you know, this deal had a, this was, excuse me, the piece that broke um, off of there up inside, you know, it's got this big old crack and stuff right there um try to get this one out of here and i'd have to rebraze this and i'm not really that good at that kind of stuff so you know these are the fittings that used to be in there they're the exact same you know one of them was in on this side the other one's up inside the engine there you know and this would obviously go like that with your nut on there so we got us uh some opposite flare fittings and what these are. I think these are what they'd call an inverted flare. Anyways, um, and you, you do a deal like this. So I got this copper tubing, half inch size, and then just, you know, use the flare, my flaring tool kit. You know, these, this actually came from Harbor Freight. I don't use it all the time, but it works great. Um, especially like, you know, I've done brake lines and stuff like that with it. But anyways, got us a double flare here. And so that's just gonna, uh, Go on like so, um, and screw on there. The other fittings up inside the uh, engine where you know where this one came out of, and so we'll just get this all uh, put back together and uh, keep on going. Okay, there we are right there. Got the new fitting all tightened up in there, you know, and then this can just bend and move around as we need to so i'm going to film it while i'm doing it just in case i'm fighting with it but pretty much we're just going to uh go ahead and uh get this thing uh mounted in there and snug and then we'll go up there with the gear and i'll show you that so anyways we'll uh we'll keep going okay uh remember i almost forgot uh we had tapped this thing on there and we tested you know test fit this made sure everything looked good uh but you want to have this all the way coming through here and then tap this on there because this doesn't go through there so just a quick little tip right there okay so once that is up in place there then you're literally just going to um let me get this thing on a stand Okay, you'll know this won't come out because that deal's kind of driven on there. But you'll uh, go up in here and just kind of turn that. And then go ahead and reach up here and grab a hold of the wheel. And you'll notice that it's turning. So, and we can grab our other gear and. Uh, Get it started in there like that. And then, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, how exactly the best order is to 
do this, but I think I'm going to get the bolt started. Okay, that might stay right there. So what I'm doing right now is just getting the bolt started up through the uh, gasket. At least just getting a couple of them, one on each side. Kind of staggered away. And then... Okay, got that one started. Okay, got a finger started there, and then grab these other two bolts. The other thing I'm listening to is, you know, that new copper tubing that we ran up inside of there. You know, if you made that thing too long, you're going to hit the crankshaft, or the crankshaft's going to hit it. You know, you want to listen for that. Right now it sounds great, but I'm also listening. I'm, I'm reaching up here and grabbing the wheel, just listening for anything abnormal there. So I'm going to grab a wrench and tighten those bolts up. All right, so that is ready to go, and we've got our new oil filter in there. We've got our valve closed now. I'm going to go ahead and just stick my uh, plug in the bottom here, just finger tight. So now, okay, now we're all, all set to fill this thing up. We've got our new oil filter in there. Everything's tight, sealed up, valves closed. So right behind this wheel right here, you're gonna have a deal like this. And so you wanna loosen this up. It's three quarter, or just use crest wrench or whatever. And then up here, and you'll unscrew this. I guess that one wasn't on very, that good. And then we'll set it aside. This is kind of a breathe, crankcase breather filter type of thing and just dump it right in there. And it's gonna take about three gallons. And um, when you get to about the, right at the end of the three gallons or so, it'll start coming out right here. And when it does start coming out of here, then you just go ahead and close this up and you're full. It's, it's more, not more simpler than that. So pretty much, you know, that's how you check the oil. Crack this open, if nothing comes out, top a little bit off in there till it does start coming out and when it does, snug, snug this up, and away you go. And you know, one thing I usually usually do is I got two gallons in here right now, which is more than enough to submerge like the pump and everything like that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and rotate the wheel around, try to get some of the oil to fill in where the filter is and, and all that. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to roll this thing over. Uh, fast enough to be able to see this gauge pop up at all you know maybe hopefully a little bit but that's what I'm going to go ahead and do and then hopefully once I see the gauge kind of maybe pick up a little bit then I'm going to go ahead and top it off with the rest of the oil but and then that way I kind of know hey we're getting oil pressure up here at least by as fast as I can crank this wheel with just my hand you know with um, no spark plugs in there so that's what we're going to do. Well, folks, uh, got this thing running. We're going to have to get us a new seal for right in here. Um, you know, this is the line that comes down, and it'll go right in the top here uh, with the um, through this steel. Uh, this isn't pressurized. For, it took a little bit for this oil to get through here and everything like that. I went ahead and took this cover off of here. Uh, the way this works is there's a little trough deal kind of right in here, so I'm assuming these as the oil comes up through this gear, it slings it and kind of fills up that trough and then just kind of just floats down in here. Um, you can see it's working. And, uh, you know, I had this thing running without um, the valve cover on there so that I can still monitor my uh, leak coming out of that tube right there, which so far is actually pretty good. Now that this thing's all uh, warmed up and everything, 
Um, we let the gauge come up a little bit about there. You know, at the high RPM, we're, we're just right in between the M and the H, so I guess we're good, hopefully. Um, I don't know what the M and H stand for. I have to get a manual and figure that out. So um, everything's looking pretty good as far as all of every, everything underneath of here. Uh, no leaks or anything. Um, so it's all, that's all looking good. Um, the next thing we're going to do, um, and what I did was I just had this oil can thing like the Tin Man head on Wizard of Oz or whatever, and I was just squirting ever randomly, just kind of squirting along here to uh, oil these up. Yeah, it made a mess and everything, but that way I can make sure that this was working, which you can see it's obviously still dripping. So yeah, it's doing good. Um, so the next thing we're going to do in, the, in another video is uh, do the valve adjustment and then we still got the video where we're going to have the young lady show us how to start this thing <clears throat> once we get everything all buttoned up and and going so um keep staying tuned for that and that's about it so everything um basically that we went through you know we broke that little that little coupler piece off of there in you know this is just recapping everything we broke that little coupler piece off of there we didn't have any oil pressure um caught it in time so everything's good but now we got the oil pressure up and all that stuff seems to be working great um so far our leak is uh not coming back so we can monitor that because this is what's going to happen you know now this thing's all warmed up and then it cools that could be where it starts to leak again. Um, well, it could even le start leaking when it warms up. You know, that could be possible. Most of the time you end up getting leaks, any kind of coolant leaks. A lot of times when they warm up and then they cool back off again. So um, anyways, uh, what we're gonna also do is we're just gonna check the torque on the head, head nuts here and make sure that everything is uh, good with that. And then, um, like I said, we're gonna go through the valve adjustment as per a service manual so we all know how to do that because i have never done it so i need to check that on this thing um just to make sure that they're not too loose or anything like that so yeah anyhow um that's it for this video um hopefully that helps you out very much if you didn't have any uh oil pressure or even just if you had low oil pressure you probably just need to clean that screen out of there that is de de definitely something i should have done uh way early on so you know if one of these is sitting around for years and years, you're going to have that stringy grew crude oil looking stuff, actually. Uh, not good, so it'll get up in there and clog everything up. So, anyways, we're uh, looking good anyways. Thanks for watching.